We're on a prophecy. I'm here with you guys today. I have some Bible numbers 944. And it's talking about a certain beast. And his name is Behemoth. Okay? This is Morona Prophecy. Everyone get your Bibles out. We're going to go to the chapter of Job. Today I received these numbers 944. And what came up was produce outgrowth. And over here I have um, Job 40:20 and Isaiah 44:19. Bring him food and all, bring him forth food where all the beasts for food the mountains bring. I fall down before a block of wood. Shall I fall down to the stock of a tree? An abomination make a block of wood fall. Okay, you guys, so let's get into it. We're going to get a little bit deeper into this meaning of 944. I am in my Strong's Hebrew right now, and I'm looking at Bible numbers 944. Okay, so there's a message today from the Lord Jesus Christ, and we're going to get into it. Job 40, 20, but we're going to take it from verse 15. Behold now behemoth, which I made with thee. He eateth grass as an ox. Lo, now his strength is in his loins and his force is in the navel of his belly. Okay. Verse 16 says again, Lo now, his strength is in his loins, and his force is in the navel of his belly. He moveth his tail like a cedar. The snows of his stones are wrapped together. So that means his snows are the tough tendons, the bones, the ligaments, you know, the, uh, the ligaments. You know, tendons, what's inside your bones, okay? They're very tough. And they said that the snows of his stones are wrapped together. His bones are as strong pieces of brass. His bones are like bars of iron. He is the chief of the ways of God. He that made him can make his sword to approach unto him. Surely the mountains bring him forth food where all the beasts of the field play. He lieth under the shady trees in the coverts of the reed and fins. Okay. And the fins means a flooded area of land. You know, an area of land that is always flooded. The shady trees cover him with their shadow. The willows of the brook compass him about. Behold, he drinketh up a river and hasteth not, hasteth not. Okay, that means he doesn't take any time to do this, okay, to drink up the river. He trusts that he can draw up Jordan into his mouth, the Jordan River. He taketh it with his eyes, his nose pierces through snares. Okay, his nose goes right through traps. Okay, here's another picture of Behemoth. Okay, God made Behemoth. And let's see what the scripture says the belly of the beast. Behold, now Behemoth, which I made with thee, he eateth grass as an ox. Lo, now his strength is. In his loins, and his force is in the navel of his belly. He moveth his tail like a cedar. The snows of iron, excuse me, the snows, his stones are wrapped together. His bones are as strong as pieces of brass. His bones are like bars of iron. He is the chief of the ways of God. He that made him can make his sword to approach unto him surely the mountains bring him forth food where all the beasts of the field play he lieth 
under the shady trees in the covert of the reed and fins. The shady trees cover him with their shadow. The willows of the brook compass him about. Behold, he drinketh up a river and hasteth not. He trusteth that he can draw up Jordan into his mouth. He taketh it with his eyes. His nose pierceth through snares. Job 40. 15 through 24 verses 15 15 through 24 let's continue okay now behemoth's origin once there was a tainted statue built uh excuse me built as homage to the demon it represented the beast of lust and gluttony behemoth a temple was built around the idol and it was worshipped by 1,000 men for 1,000 days as a god on the 909th day, a man covered in silk came and identified himself as a prophet, warning the cultists that if they did not stop, the statues they praised would come alive and eat them all. Each man ignored the man of silk and they continued for another day. On the final day, the prophecy came true. The statue's eyes awoke with the rise of the sun, stepping down from the altar. It then grew tall, taller than any man, and it looked down, projecting hunger from his eyes. He began to eat each of the men one by one. With each man, his features changed, becoming more like the creature he resembled also causing him to grow larger in size. Wow, amen. Let's continue. Larger in size. When the last man was eaten, he grew intelligent and he knew of his existence. He would be known as the behemoth to others, but he knew he was truly not. He sought a name for himself in his mind and he chose Dundayan, okay? which means the desert east of Eden, Dundayan, D-U-N-D-A-Y-I-N. Now, Behemoth sought this name for himself in his mind, and it means the desert east of Eden. He exists to please himself, the demon Behemoth. He is, being, he is a being of pure lust, a monster of unstoppable gluttony. Woe, betide the mortal who seeks him, for only death awaits, save for the man of silken cloth abilities. Dundayan possesses the unique ability to manipulate wine in any way he pleases at any time. This is both his talent and his weapon, luring both men and women alike to bed with his intoxicating beverages. On rare occasions, Dundayan is granted the power to move sand and only then for a set amount of time. This event has happened in the past during a fight and once during a fit of destruction, but it caused, oh, excuse me, but its cause is still unknown. Okay, items. Devoid of clothing, the beast wears a single item, bronze bracer, is clasped on his left wrist, attached to a brass chain that holds a symbol of Christ hanging upside down on a thorned crucifix. Wow. This object serves only as decoration to him, to his evil. Though it is supposedly tied to the same book that brought the destruction of Saddam and Gomorrah, also though he has known, excuse me, he has none on his possession. He currently seeks demonic relics to augment and strengthen his abilities. When he isn't eating, killing, or effing, he is more than likely searching uh, forgotten temples and tombs for sub such objects. Giving him tips to such places guarantees your life be spared and lies results in swift, painful death. Let me read that again right there. I'm barely understanding it. Okay, after he does all these bad things, he is more than likely searching Forgotten temples and tombs for such objects, giving him tips to such places guarantees your life be spared and lies results in swift, painful death. Wow. So, oh, okay. Oh, so I guess when you conjure him up and you give him tips of um, such places for him to go to, um, he guarantees your life to be spared. Okay. And um, he lies results in swift, painful death. Okay, well, that's really weird. But, um, yeah, you see what this demon is. 
Okay, and what is this saying? Let's let's go furthermore. Then day in is approximately sixteen or sixteen four, I guess, in height. I guess sixteen feet four inches in height. Despite his impos uh, imposing appearance, he is curious of mortal concerns and often does not initiate conversation, preferring to eavesdrop or wait for someone to speak with him. He is known, how, however, to take what he wants whenever he wants by initiating, by initiating role play. You must accept that he is not only stronger than you, physically anyways, but that you are subject to his every whim. He technically cannot do whatever he pleases with anyone, but when you invoke his attention onto yourself, a rift splits open within your soul, and Dundan is granted access to your being, ogle his ponderous bulk at your own risk. Okay, and um, I guess this is, I don't know if this is someone writing this, but let's, uh, what does it say? I'm a lazy tart in a story. If you are interested, okay, okay, okay. Okay, I don't know what that is. But we just want the information, okay, based on this demon behemoth. And the Lord gave me these uh, Bible angel numbers, 944. And when I looked it up, Lord, behold, this is what it was. But I also want to talk to you about another scripture in Isaiah regarding um, this uh, monster also, this demon, okay? Now we're going to focus in on Isaiah 44, 19, okay? Okay, now we're in Isaiah... Let me see. This is Isaiah 44, 19, right here in the blue. Let's take it from the top. And none considereth in his heart, neither is there knowledge nor understanding to say, I have burned parts of it in the fire. Yet also I have baked bread upon the coals thereof. I have roasted flesh and eaten it. And shall I make the residue thereof an abomination? Shall I fall down to the stock of the tree? Okay. And um, let's just start at verse 15. Okay. Um, I just wanted to read this also. Okay. Let's start at 14. He heweth him down cedars and taketh the cypress of the oaks, which he strengtheneth for himself among the trees of the forest. He planteth an ash, and the rain doeth nourish it. Then shall it be for a man to burn, for he will take thereof and warm himself. Yeah, he kindled it and baked, baketh bread. Yeah, he maketh a god and worshipped it. He maketh it a graven image and falleth down thereto. He burneth part thereof in the fire with parts thereof. He eateth flesh. He roasteth roast and is satisfied. Yeah, he warmeth himself and saith, aha, I am warm. I have seen the fire and the residue thereof. He maketh a god. Even his graven image, he falleth down unto it and worship it and prayeth unto it and said, deliver me for thou art my God. They have not known nor understood for he hath shut their eyes. They cannot see in their hearts that they cannot understand. Wow. So right here, this must be this graven image, this demon who men are worshiping, okay, here in Isaiah chapter 44, okay, because um, this is uh, right here, the everlasting salvation for Israel, okay, and also the Lord, the only redeemer, the Lord Jesus Christ is the only redeemer, the only one who, who, who forgives of sins, okay, and uh, let's just read 20, he feedeth on ashes, a deceived heart hath turned him aside that he cannot deliver his soul nor say, is there not a lie in my right hand? Okay, let's read 21. Remember these, O Jacob and Israel, for thou art my servant. I have formed thee. Thou art my servant, O, o Israel. Thou shalt not be forgotten of me. Wow. Okay, I have blotted out as a thick cloud, thy transgressions and as a cloud, thy sins return unto me for I have redeemed thee. Sing. O ye heavens for the Lord have done it. Shout 
ye lower parts of the earth. Break forth into singing, ye mountains, O forest, and every tree therein. For the Lord hath redeemed Jacob and glorified himself in Israel. Thus said the Lord, thy Redeemer, and he that formed thee from the womb. I am the Lord that maketh all things, that stretches forth the heavens alone, that spreadeth abroad the earth by myself. Okay? That frustrated the tokens of the liars and maketh diviners mad. That turneth wise men backwards and maketh their knowledge foolish. That confirmeth the word of his servant and performeth the counsel of his messengers that saith to Jerusalem. Thou shalt be inhabited and to the city of Judah. Yeah, shall be built. Yes, excuse me. Ye shall be built and I will raise up the decayed places thereof. Let's see. That saith to the deep, be dry and I will dry up the river. That saith to Cyrus, he is my shepherd and shall perform all my pleasure. Even saying to Jerusalem, thou shalt be built and to the temple thy foundation shall be laid. And I'm just going to read you the rest of the information here in my, see, I'm reading this also, uh, with my demons and demonology book. Okay. By Rosemary Ellen Gilly. This is a really good book. Um, it's based on the scriptures, uh, verses in the Bible and everything relating to these demons. Okay. Behemoth. And this is the one we were talking about. The, the Bible angel numbers that the Lord gave me today. Nine, four, four, check it out. In the Bible, a name used for the devil referring to an impure animal, an unclean spirit. Behemoth is derived from the Hebrew word behemoth, meaning beast or large animal. Job 40, 15 through 24. We just read that. Describes behemoth as the first of the works of God. Okay, listen. Of Yahweh, the first of the works of God. The primal monster of the land. Okay. Remember Leviathan was in the water. Okay. And behemoth is on land. And one of them they say is male and one of them is female. But don't quote me. Okay. Let's continue. Behold behemoth which I made as I made you. He eats grass like an ox. Behold his strength is in his loins. And his power is in the muscles of his belly. He maketh his tail stiff like a cedar, a cedar tree, you guys, okay? The snows of his thighs are knit together, okay? So you already know that's the tendons, the leg the ligaments, and, and, you know, the bone structure, okay? His bones are tubes of bronze. His limbs like bars of iron. He is the first of the works of God, okay? They keep on stressing that. He is the first of the works of God. So search out the works of Yahweh and you will see behemoth is the first of the works of God. Okay, let's continue. Trying to focus my phone here. Let who made him bring near his sword. For the mountains yield food for him where all the wild beasts play. Under the lotus plant, he lies. Okay, you guys know what a lotus plant is. Look it up if you don't. Get a picture of it. In the convert, the covert, I mean, of the reeds and in the marsh. For his shade, the lotus tree covers him. The willows of the brook surround him. Behold, if the river is turbulent, he is not frightened. He is confident though Jordan rushes against his mouth so this is a huge beast you see you hear what i'm saying this is a gigantic beast that the river can gush can rush uh against his mouth can one take him with hooks or pierce his nose with a snare okay also um the verse one enoch have you guys heard of the book of enoch get into that also check that out okay Enoch 67 through 8 a o oh, refers to behemoth and leviathan okay i was just speaking on that as the two monsters who will be parted at the final judgment wow so these two beasts will appear when jesus comes back the final judgment 
okay, will be parted at the final judgment. On that day, two monsters will be parted. One monster, a female named Leviathan. Okay, so Leviathan is the female. In order to dwell in the abyss of the ocean over the fountains of water and the other a male called behemoth which holds his chest in an invisible desert whose name is dundayan remember he renamed himself in his own mind okay east of the garden eden so okay adam and eve we're getting somewhere okay this demon resides east of the garden of eden and this beast was one of the first beasts made that yahweh made remember he made adam and eve okay he also made this beast at the same time this is one of the first beasts behemoth wherein the elect and the righteous ones dwell now who was the elect and who was the righteous behemoth represents unconquerable strength this is morona prophecy and i'm here and i'm signing out with uh bible angel numbers 944 that strong concordance or that that strong's uh the Hebrew, same thing, Strong's Hebrew Concordance, okay, this is the demon behemoth, okay, and um, I just also wanted to show you um, the Strong's Exhaustive Concordance, what it says uh, about 944, the behemoth, food, stock, for produce of the earth, food, stock, okay, I just wanted to leave you guys with a little bit of commentary, okay? So it says, what does the behemoth symbolize? Behemoth is the term in the Hebrew language for a great beast, representing loyalty, integrity, majesty, and dignity, making altogether a single uh, beast of gigantic proportions. Mentioned in the scriptures and the representation of mind, power, and be parallel to a Leviathan sea monster. Now, behemoth, Hebrew is, okay, this is the the Bible terminology, is a beast mentioned in Job 40, 15 through 24, what we went through, suggested identities range from a mythological creature to an elephant, a hippopotamus, a rhinoceros, or buffalo. Metaphorically, the name has come to be used for any extremely large or powerful entity so remember this is a demon entity a very powerful demon entity that uh is a land creature okay and the the strength is in its its navel of its belly okay furthermore um the garden of eden is considered to be mythological by most scholars among those that consider it to have been real there have been various suggestions we know it's real um at the head of the persian gulf is where it's located in southern mesopotamia now iraq okay where the tigris and euphrates rivers run into the sea and in armenia okay that's very interesting okay this is uh the garden of eden because it was a specific place where this this demon entity this animal dwelled okay under the lotus trees okay and i just wanted to show you guys some animated uh pictures of this supposed beast okay Uh, some more pictures okay so praise god this is marona prophecy and i'm signing out and this is for bible angel numbers 944 behemoth all right be blessed